Hello everyone. In this episode, we are going to learn how to visualize business critical informations in real time dashboards for your serverless applications. I think you and me both agree data is essential for making business decisions. And when they are real time, that is even more useful. In the previous episode, I showed you how to report production errors in real time for you or your developers so that you can take corrective actions immediately. So today, Let's go one more step further and see how we can visualize business critical data in real time dashboards. So let's get started. Hey, my name is Manoj and in this channel, I create videos to solve problems when you start using AWS in your production projects. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like these. Okay, so this is what we are going to accomplish at the end of this video. So we will have this real time dashboard for our note taking application. And whenever a new note is added by a user, that will be showed here. So all these charts will be updated, including this data table. So let me show you that. So I'll go here and add another new note. And I'll give it a different username, Fernando. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new note. Okay, it is created. So let's see if that will appear here. So have a look at this pie chart. It should automatically be updated in a bit. There you go. So it is updated. So this dashboard is real time and you can share this with your customer and that will probably be useful for making different business decisions. So watch this video till the end. You will also be able to come up with a real time dashboard just like this. Okay, so let's continue from where we left off in the previous episode. So in the previous episode, we created a system to report production errors into your email as soon as it occurred. So it will send you the detail about the error and how to debug it as well in real time to you or your developer's email. So you can check out the code here. So we had two services. One is node services. This is a CRUD operation for our note taking application and it has two functions. So one for creating notes and the other one for getting notes by its ID. So in both these cases, we are throwing some errors to simulate a production error. So since there's an error, it will resolve in the catch block. And in the catch block, we are logging that error with the type and the message call stack and any payload, you know, any context data. So this logged get logged in CloudWatch and then we configured some CloudWatch matrices to look at specifically for the types of errors. And then there's a SNS subscription that has a Lambda attached. And in that Lambda function, it will query about more details about this error message. And it will then send an email using SCS. So if you haven't watched that video, I'll post a link up here. And you probably should watch it before this video. Okay, now we have a proper error reporting mechanism. But now I want to report any informational logs that will be useful for my customer in order to make good decisions for his businesses looking at the application usage. So instead of throwing out an error here, let me take that out. So I'm going to call the same log service, but this time instead of type error, so I have a, another type called info. So I can create filter patterns to extract only these informational logs and then send these logs to a Kibana dashboard so my customers can easily visualize them. So I don't need message and call stack attributes. Let me take that out. I'm only printing the data. So the data that is coming into this function is the event.body. So which is the details about the note. All right. So if I go into this log function, so that is required from lib slash logger. So this is my lib folder and inside that we have the logger function. We export it down here. So together with the app name, stage and service name, it is going to add the payload that has been passed down to this, which is this particular object. So that whole thing get logged. We use console.log. And since Lambda has the direct integration with CloudWatch, this get logged into CloudWatch. And now let's deploy this whole thing using serverless framework. I'll change the region to US West 1. That region I don't have anything deployed. So it looks all good. I pull up the terminal, go into this notes folder, then do SLS deploy. Okay. 
So it's going to take a couple of minutes and after that you will see these two endpoints post endpoint and the get endpoint. So we'll use our post endpoint to post some nodes. So I go to postman and paste this post URL up here and then I'll select row and the JSON type. So I'm going to create a JSON object and with the ID of one title of the note and then created by let's say it's me who is creating it and I'll post this request and I get an internal error so let's look at that well we forgot to return the response from the function see in the try catch it is just login so I need to return it so I'll return the response as 201 since something has been created and I'm going to return the same data set here and then I'll do another SLS deploy okay, now let's try that again so I will send this same request and this time I get the response back okay let's look at CloudWatch and see if that log data is available in CloudWatch so I go to AWS console and type CloudWatch and I go to logs view log groups and there we have our create notes log group by the way if you have a lot of log groups here what you can easily do here is to uh, go to your lambda and then search for your lambda function so this in this case it is create notes and click onto this then go to monitoring section and then click view logs in CloudWatch then that will open only that uh, particular log group cool so I have these two requests so I will open the latest one the one that was successful and here I will see my console log statement so I have app name app stage type and the payload and the payload contains all the node information the ID title and the creative pipe now in order to visualize this data I wanted to stream this information to a Kibana dashboard so I'll go back to my log groups nodes they create nodes I'm here and then I'll click actions and then I can create a subscription you see create subscription for Elasticsearch so let me click on that so what we are going to do here is we are going to stream our data to a Elasticsearch index and AWS Elasticsearch service come with a Kibana dashboard automatically so let's use that so my elastic search is in this account then I have to pick this elastic search currently I haven't created anything so I will click services and type elastic search open into a new tab I will go to that tab and then I'll click create a new domain so I'll select development and testing latest version of elastic search and click next notes cluster a name for your domain and then I have to pick the instance type now I'm gonna go ahead and select t2 small because this instance is available inside our free tier and then number of nodes one and I'll keep everything as defaults click next so it is recommended to have this elastic search domain inside a VPC but in order to share a link to my Kibana dashboard for my customer I'm gonna click public access I will have a access policy by whitelisting couple of IP addresses so I will select IP address and then I have to uh, select the action to allow it and then I have to enter the IP address here so I take another tab and just type what is my IPv4 click one of these links there we go so this is my IPv4 address right now then I come here and paste it in and the t2 small instance that I picked earlier is not providing any encryption so let me uncheck this one and click next so all looks good so I am only enabling this particular IPv4 address and then click confirm so it's going to take some time to create this domain so I'll post this video and come back once it's created okay now my Elasticsearch domain is now active so let's go ahead and stream our CloudWatch logs to this particular Elasticsearch cluster. 
So I'll go to log groups again and this is the create notes log group. So I'll click onto that and then go to actions and then create elastic search subscription filter. So again, I click this account and then then it shows my notes cluster, the elastic search cluster I just created. And then I have to set up a role for a Lambda function. Now this Lambda function is created by AWS CloudWatch. So when we say to stream data to Elasticsearch, so it's going to create a Lambda function that does this functionality. So we need to provide necessary permission to index log data to our Elasticsearch. So let's go ahead and create an IAM role. So I'll leave this page open once again. Search for IAM and open it in a new tab. And I'll click on roles. I will click create role for an AWS service, which AWS service. So this is going to be for our Lambda AWS service. And then I click next. So for this demo, I will search for manage policy. ES full access or Amazon ES full access. Check this and click tags. Next review. I'll give it a role name. Notes ES cluster role. Click create role. Let's search for it. There we have it. Notes ES cluster role. So I'll go back to the, my previous tab and then do a refresh here. Search for notes ES cluster role. This one. So the format of my log is of JSON because we are printing a JSON object. And then we have to enter a subscription filter pattern. Now, if you don't enter it, it's going to stream all the logs into my Elasticsearch. So more data that you index in Elasticsearch that you have to pay more. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to use a filter pattern. I open and close two curly braces, then dollar dot type equal info. Now if you can remember, so when I'm logging it, I set the type to info. So I can filter out only the info logs by doing this attribute filtering. Here we go and uh, we'll test that if that works. So I'll choose the latest logs. And as you can see, here's our payload and it has this info and let's test our pattern whether it will capture it. There you go. So it captured. So I'm going to go ahead and click start streaming. So now CloudWatch is going to stream all that log data matches that filter pattern to our Elasticsearch. Now let's go to our Elasticsearch service. So in this service, we have an endpoint for Kibana. So let me right click and open it in a new tab. So it's going to open up Kibana for me. Now remember guys, if the whitelist IP address is not matching, then uh, this is not going to show for you. All right, so let's go ahead and discover our logs. So here I'll click discover. So it says first I have to create an index pattern and also it couldn't find an elastic search data. So let's go ahead and create a couple of nodes. So CloudWatch will stream some data to elastic search. So I will go to my postman, create a couple of nodes. I will create the same posts again. There you go, and I'll create a couple more posts. Okay, so let's go back to our index and see if we have any Elasticsearch data. So it's checking for that. And can you see? So it tracked this CloudWatch pattern. So as for the index pattern, I will type the same CWL dash star. So it's going to match any CloudWatch log patterns. So then I'll click next. And then I'm going to select the timestamp field. And then I'll click create index pattern. So it has already started identifying different fields. Now here, if I go to next. And you see app name app stage and post ID, uh, the payload title and the created by and all these things are available and we can use them. So I will go ahead and click discover again. So this time it's going to show me those nodes I have created. 
So I'll click here and then select today. So it will show all today logs. Now I can highlight this, then I can further drill it down. There you go. And I can further drill down. And now I will see exactly those five nodes I created. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. And it has picked the attributes as well. So now what I can do here is I can create a data table. So let me choose few fields. So I'll start with payload ID. You see now the payload ID field is added or the column is added. Then I will add payload title and created by. Now I can actually save this table and have it inserted into my dashboard later. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click save notes data table and save it. Now let me click here again and set some refresh interval. So for this demo, let me set the refresh interval to five seconds and click start. So it's going to check all the logs in every five seconds. So at the moment I have these five items. So let me go ahead and create the sixth element or sixth note. And I will create it for Manoj again and then hit send. It's created. So let me come here and we'll wait if that appears. So I need to click here and select today. Otherwise, it's not going to show. And when I do so, the new record is appearing. So I'll add another one. Send. And let's wait for it. There you go. So it just appeared. Perfect. Now, apart from this data table, I want to create some more visualizations. So in order to create visualizations, select this tab, visualize. I'll go ahead and create, create a new visualization. And this time I'm going to create a pie chart. I'll pick the source as our CloudWatch log group. So what I want to display in this pie chart is the number of nodes created by different users in my system. So I'll click here for the metrics and it is a count, so that's fine. And as for different slices in my pie chart, I'll click split slice. And for aggregation, I'm going to search for terms and select it. Then I'm going to select the created by field. So let me select that. There we have it, payload by dot created by dot keyword so this is going to give me the names for different users who create the nodes so i'll select the size for 10 so maximum of 10 users will be shown here okay then i'm go ahead and click this one apply changes so we'll see my pie chart is been updated can you see this is manoj and and two nodes from Anne and two nodes from peter three nodes from manoj so let me add a custom label here as the user and save changes again. I can further customize this view if I go to options here then I can show labels and then I can pick uh, whether I just need a pie chart instead of this donut chart and let me apply changes. Perfect. Okay, now I will save this visualization. User notes, user notes, pie chart, and save this. All right. So let's go back to visualize, and this time let's create a bar chart. There we go. Vertical bar. Choose the source. So this is going to be again count. So I will add a custom label, notes count, and then. I will add the x-axis so this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis for the x-axis so again I am going to select terms and which term am I going to select again I will select the same term I previously selected which is the created by and I will have maximum of uh, 10 users to show there so here as the custom label I will add users and then click apply changes so I will save this chart as well. Now 
Now let's get all these charts into a dashboard. So I'll pick dashboard here and I'm going to create a new dashboard. I will click add and then I'm going to add all these three items. Perfect. So I will drag my data table all the way here and the pie chart and the bar chart right here. So let me save this dashboard. So let's go ahead and test this again. I will create another note by another user. So note from again, let's say IT class. This time it's Andrew and I will create it. So it's created and we'll wait until it shows up. There you go. So it showed up. The Andrew showed up here and my both charts got updated and my data table let's see is also updated now you can easily go ahead and share this dashboard you can either use an embed code or a normal link so there you go now you have a real-time dashboard that can be shared with your customer so this is what i want to show you in this video